Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Play on GAA. My name is Seamus Brady and I'm here today to do a match review of the Mayo versus Armagh game from the Allianz League Division 1. It finished Mayo 15 points, Armagh won 10. And I just want to say straight up, this was a fantastic game of Gaelic football. I mean, most of the games in the Allianz League so far have been really dogged by poor conditions, but this game was played in really good conditions and it definitely lived up to the hype. Mayo, you know, leading for the first time in the 70th minute. I mean, that shows really how gritty they were. Like, Armagh showed the entire game were fantastic as well. It was another... It was one of those games where both sides kind of won. I know that, like, Armagh came out the wrong side of the result, but their performance was absolutely excellent. And once again, they showed that they can compete at the highest level. They got off to the perfect start. I mean, 14 seconds into the game, Kieran Mackin. I don't think he meant it, but the ball ends up in the back of the net. He went. I think he went for the point. It goes into the top corner. What a start for our match, just like that. I mean, and they followed it on. Rory Grugan, a few minutes later, kicked a very eye-catching point. That made it 1-3 to a point. Ama showing that they meant business in the hide. And at that stage, you would be more than forgiven for backing Ama to actually go on and win the game because they had surprised people, you know, on the first day when they looked so good against Dublin. But, you know, Mayo, again, reminding us of the grit and the heart that they have. Um, fantastic from them. Uh, Ryan O'Donoghue, who hit all their first three points, his third one was from play on the left foot. Fantastic score by him. Um, Dermot O'Connor, you know, kicked a point as well that brought it back to one point. Reno O'Neill hit a gorgeous point. This one, I think he took on the young Mayo defender and curled it in inside the posts at the last second. It was like a real eye-catching score. It was his first of the day. That made it 1-4 to 5 points. Then, Dermot O'Connor got a point with Aidan O'Shea and Ryan O'Donoghue involved in the build-up. That made it 1-5 to 8 points. Mayo finally level. Arma at this point then sprung Connor Turbot off the bench and with his first touch, he put it over the bar. That was Arma's second point on the bounce after O'Connor's equaliser, making it 1-7 to 8 points. A Kevin McLaughlin point brought the gap back to 1 after a late flurry by both sides and an Aidan Nugent point then. This one was very interesting. Aidan Nugent got two points back-to-back after the Kevin McLaughlin point. The first one was well set by Niall Rowland, but then this one, Ethan Rafferty, who's more known really as an outfield footballer, he played in goal for this game. Rafferty had spent, you know, pretty much his entire career with our man, the forwards. He played in goal. He proper sprinted out with a goal for this one, got on the end of the move, and then kicked it across to Aidan Nugent to hit a gorgeous point to put three points in. And at this stage, you would actually be thinking that our man can surely get over the line and get the win. But no, Mayo hit five points in a row to claim the victory. Fantastic. The equaliser came from Paddy Durkin in the 66th minute. Then Jordan Flynn gave Mayo the lead in the 70th minute. As I mentioned, the first time that they had the lead. And then Reno O'Neill had a free out on the wing. To be honest, I was surprised he went for it. I mean, he's one of those players that you would never really back against him not getting it. But I was still surprised that he went for it. The free drop short, brilliantly caught by Aiden O'Shea. It was a great break by Mayo. Loads of people involved. Matthew Rand, Jordan Flynn, all involved in this move. It ends up with Paddy Durkin and he clips it over the bar. And just like that, Mayo are two points in front. It's over for Aaron Matt. There seemed to be a fantastic atmosphere in Dr. Hyde Park. And again, I mean, people were talking about uh, on, on the post-game analysis of, oh, never write off Mayo. I never really wrote off Mayo after last year's All-Ireland final defeat. They bounced back from so much worse, I'm thinking, psychologically. Because, yeah, I know that they didn't really turn up in last year's All-Ireland final. But that, if you flip it in a different way, that can almost be something more of a comfort, that they know they didn't play their best that day. And they lost by five points. They know that they, they left that game behind them, potentially. Toronto are a very good side, I know. But I'd say that the 2017 loss to Dublin by a point, the 2016 loss to Dublin after a replay by a point, that those games were way more heartbreaking because they literally left everything on the pitch. They, they didn't have an ounce of energy left. They literally emptied themselves into those all Ireland finals and they came up by a point short. I mean, the, two, the 2017 one was heartbreaking. They looked... After Keegan's goal, especially, I was thinking there's no way they can lose this. And they somehow did. And it'd be one of those where 
I would have thought that that would have been harder to come back from than then this year, then last year's all Ireland final defeat and coming back this year. I think that once you didn't play your best, I feel like it's easier to bounce back from than if you were so close and you just didn't get over the line. Um, but yeah, they did really, the young lads they have coming through again. And the fact that Ushi Mullen is staying, Killian O'Connor, if he comes back into the side, Aidan O'Shea looks really good around the middle. I mean, his the way he was moving on the ball, fantastic. And I think that's where he should be played for now. As I mentioned, I'd have him at centre forward as a third midfielder with Carney, Jack Carney, that is, or Jordan Flynn, partner, and Matthew Ran in the midfield. That's what I would do. Um, and then in the, for the rest of the forwards, Mayo just have options upon options upon options. I mean, you had Frank Irwin there, 19 years of age, making his first start for Mayo, looked pretty good as well. So Horan just keeps pulling these options out of nowhere. And if O'Connor comes back in, watch out, because Mayo are, are in really good shape. So are Armagh. Both these sides pushing towards the top of Division 1. Been a fantastic league campaign for both. Now Mayo go away to Kerry. And this is the game. This is the game that tells me who's in the best shape right now because Kerry and Mayo look the best. And whoever wins this one, I think, is going to go on to win the league, um, in my opinion. I think it's a massive psychological game. I think Kerry having Mayo at home does give them a big advantage, but you can never ride off Mayo. So I can't wait for that one. Arma as well, it's going to be interesting to see how they ride out the league. So far, they've been brilliant. They've got very, very interesting matches coming up. I mean, Donegal is going to be a very interesting game, especially. So keeping an eye out for that. And yeah, guys, so that is my match review of Mayo versus Armagh. Finished Mayo 15 points, Armagh 110. Keep an eye out for all the other content on the channel. Until next one, guys, take care.